Welcome. This is your friend and your host, Karunia Tani, and welcome to The Secret to Love, Health, and Wealth. And this is our episode one, The Secret to Health, and I'm very excited about it. So without any further ado, let's welcome our guest and start the show. Hi, Lynn. Welcome. Hey, thanks. How are you? Thanks for having me. This is fun. It's wonderful, Lynn. Okay. So, Lynn, I'm quite excited about this topic, The Secret to Health. I've been with the principles, this understanding. I've seen it working for people's psychological problems like stress, depression, anxiety, but I've never seen any transformation in health. So what do the principles have to do with the health? And what is the secret? Because what I've learned is there are things like diet, exercise, sleep, but beyond that, there's something that we are missing. And I know the secret is something like that. So I want to ask you, what is the secret to health? And the way I look at it is um, not just physical health, but mental health, emotional health, right? Because, you know, all of that goes into your health. Oh, we keep losing people, they'll come back. All of that goes into your health, right? So what I've come to see uh, being in the fitness business, I was for 15 years, and um, even my own journey getting healthy is the secret to health, uh, I believe, is uh, surrendering to life versus resisting life, right? So to kind of back the boat up on that, I think that for anyone who uh, wants to get healthy is to number one, know where your experience of stress comes from, anxiety comes from, depression, guilt, shame, and blame, and all of that, right? Because what I've seen over the years, and even my experience, you know, when we're stressed out, right? Uh, I, I do a lot of work with people who emotionally eat, then you're uh, stress eating, emotionally eating, right? And, and uh, then you get diabetes, and then you get high blood pressure, then you get cholesterol issues. So you kind of go down uh, the path of poor physical health. And the least place, you know, even in, in the industry I was in for 15 years, and, and I didn't even have the principles back then, I could see that there was a puzzle of the piece missing, but I didn't know what it was. You know, people say, oh, well, I'm addicted to sugar. And, uh, you know, the reason why people go to eat, drink or smoke or anything like that is because they believe, as you know, that the habit they think makes them feel better, even for a minute or two, and then they beat themselves up. But really, we know what's really happening is they're not paying attention to their stressful thinking, anxious thinking, uh, fearful thinking, whatever they got going on in their head. And so they feel better. But it doesn't look that way. Ah, gosh, it's no wonder, you know, people have these issues because it looks like the food and the, the drugs and the drinking and, and the smoking uh, makes them feel better, but it doesn't. So, uh, you know, the secret, I say this, we say the secret to health that's really not well known is number one, really seeing on that deep level where your experience comes from. Now, why is that important, right? Uh, because when you don't see it, you live as a victim, so to speak, right? You have to, you blame people, first of all, you get jealous of people, you hold uh, grudges, and you think you've got to shift and, and change something in your outer world. I can't have bread. I hear it all the time, people. I can't have bread. I can't have sugar. I can't eat this. I can't eat that. I can't control myself. So now you're trying to manipulate you know, something in your outer world, I have to stay away from this. And so, you know, we lose our way, you know, and so when we don't really know where these feelings come from, uh, we spend most of our time living in stress versus inner peace. And, uh, you know, people get diagnosed with digestive issues, my sister does, you know, all the time for many years. And, uh, you know, she doesn't see that if that stress is coming from her. So, you know, stress, as we all know, literally turns on these receptor sites that we have for diseases in our body, cancer. It's nothing new. We all know that. But the root cause looks like it's coming from outside. 
but it isn't obviously it's coming from the way that we're thinking about ourselves our weight the number on the scale our past our drinking our smoking whatever it is and that's the secret the way uh i see it because in my own experience because when you do see it you have the option when you when you see it you know when you wake up to it and seeing that it's coming from you you don't have to continue down that path so eventually the more you see it and even in my own experience i spend more time living in in the present moment of inner peace and contentment and that's the place where we don't have to uh try to control life we can surrender to trust and faith and uh you know it's a new way to live life i always had my hands tied on the steering wheel sometimes i still could that invisible steering wheel i feel it but the more time that we live from the place of surrender with just trust and faith um i think our physical and and mind is that mind uh, is what i'm speaking from you really improve in a way you know uh, you're not bathing your organs in in these uh stressful chemicals which do major damage heart disease uh all of that and um you know doctors don't see it and uh most professionals out there don't see it and uh you know everything in the outer world to them looks stressful and uh so the secret lies in really knowing where that experience comes from because when you're able to surrender you're living more in the moment and we know living more in the moment is we have our treasure chest of resiliency of wisdom you know happiness contentment all of that you know i'll just share i i lost my mother uh, august 3rd of or august 3rd and um you know just being there in the room and the last couple of weeks were you know were tough but i decided that i wasn't going to be frantic i decided i was going to go through this whole process in the present moment as much as possible and um because that's a place i could be at my best and i didn't want to be freaked out i didn't want to be like um crazy upset it's upsetting of course it is but i was able to go through this process uh i made a decision more celebration than grieving you know people will say well you know you're ignoring your feelings no i'm not i don't have any grieving feelings I, i'm not ignoring anything you know i don't it, it's it's just different and so you know you can make these decisions cuz i don't want to spend uh my days being in bed and being uh so crazy upset and having this stress move through my body i'm not productive uh, i don't want to live that way so when you're when you surrender you have your wits about you you have that common sense that will tell you you know help guide you your inner guide and um you live in better mental health obviously than you do in poor mental health and poor mental health as i just said and, and you know causes all kinds of medical issues and um that's that's really the secret is all what you're learning and um you know this story just occurs to me uh years ago when i was in the fitness business i would have women come in who emotionally ate and they had 30 40 100 pounds to lose and they'd say lynn my son's getting married it would be say january i need to lose 40 pounds well when is your son getting married in march do you think it's doable No, not really. And and you know, I said, well, after you lose the weight, what are you going to do after your son gets married? I'm going to go back and eat again. So, you know, we we look for we look to the outside often, you know, we just have to lose this weight and then we go back, but the weight is never the problem. It's we're listening to the wrong uh voice, so to speak, the wrong thought system, right? Was well, one system, but we're listening to the ego thoughts we're we're trying to resist life, you know. any time we're in a habit we're always resisting life and so uh people just don't see it so the secret truly lies in it what is not well known uh the easier way to live life and it's uh knowing that you're the uh creator that your feelings always and only come from thought nowhere else and um i think that's um that's the magic beautiful the secret the secret, secret. when you talked about surrendering to life versus resisting life so how does this understanding help people gain or lose weight 
Well, yeah, I'm having a class running right now. So this, this is really good. Anytime I have a course, I always say this is not a weight loss course because we don't address weight at all. And, and so how it helps people is seeing that where stress comes from. But like, I'll give you an example. Uh, my course for Sunday is who are you as an eater? Do you come to the table uh, from a place of uh, stress or from a place of calm? And so when you're coming from a place of stress, what do people do? They overeat, they binge, they crave, right? And I'm mean, honest, um, that type of eating is overeating, obviously, right? And then you gain weight. So when they begin to see, oh, I could quiet my mind down. I could eat whatever I'm eating from a place of uh, calm. I'm not resisting life. I can just surrender. And often, you know, the food on the plate even looks different. Because we all give meaning to food for comfort, company, love, relaxation, uh, when we're bored, when we're lonely, you know, an urge, a craving is thought. And when they begin to see that, they don't have to go at eight o'clock at night to eat a bag of chips because they think they're hungry. If their mind's settled for a moment, uh, you know, they can, they can check in with their body because your body will always tell you. So it really helps uh, tune you into your uh, inner wisdom and helps you slow down. You know, we speed up to thought, but it helps people really slow down. And, um, you know, weight loss eventually happens because people aren't getting up at three o'clock in the morning, laying in bed, feeling stressed out at 3 a.m., you know, and then they have to go to the kitchen to eat something so they, they can feel better, so to speak, and fall back to sleep. So, um, yeah, I would say that it is absolutely huge. Um, and knowing, and you know, we talked about, you know, last week it, it started and I asked them, the group, where do you think your experience of stress eating comes from? Well, my mother died a year ago. I lost all this weight. I gained it back or, you know, I got divorced. So it looks like they gained the weight back because of an event in their life. That couldn't be further from the truth, but it looks that way, you know. So helping people see that their experience comes within via thought only, not the event is um, a game changer. As I always say, I love that word because it is, it is a game changer. It's quite interesting to see that the cause is just thought. Our yes. eating is not just eating, it is stressful eating. We eat yeah. too much when we feel stressed, depressed or sad. And that's like yeah. a mechanism, a cope mechanism to feel better. And yeah, that's great, great. But yeah. how can it help people heal from chronic pain or like fetal diseases? What if somebody has cancer? What if somebody uh, has a big disease that doctors can't cure? How can this understanding help them? Well, I'm not a doctor by any means. And my only thought process on that, so to speak, is, you know, you spent, if you can spend, if someone can spend more time in inner peace, this is a question I ask people out there, and I'll ask you, do you spend more time in any given day feeling stressed out or from inner peace? And a lot of people say, oh, I probably spend 90% of my day feeling stressed, maybe 10% feeling peaceful. So if someone who has some type of disease can switch that, if they can spend more time in contentment and inner peace, I don't know, uh, maybe they could be, maybe there would be more healing happening for them. I, I don't know, everybody's path is different, but um, maybe if they bathe their organs in, in better, you know, emotions, better chemicals, you know, that might uh, help them heal. Interesting. You were talking about feeling stressed and then eating all the things. What if somebody has a job where they have to work 10 or 12 hours a day and it's quite stressful? They have to attend, let's say, emergency calls and it's quite stressing for them. So it's good to understand that, yeah, feelings come from our thoughts, our thinking. But what if something is quite practical? How does it work that way? You're saying what they really have, obviously, urgent things happening. Yeah. So how can this understanding yeah. help them? Yeah, um, absolutely. Great question. You know, we don't deny that 
you know, there are jobs out there that are stressful. They are demanding that they require a lot, you know, uh, doctors, nurses, you know, being in ORs and, and, you know, emergency line help people, of course, you know, but uh, once they can begin to see that um, it still looks like the stress is coming from what's happening, but when you begin to see that it's just how you're responding to it, and you know your mind can quiet down in any given moment, you can be more effective working from a place of that innate health, what we call innate well being. You can uh, do your job a million times better from that space than you can from stress mode. You know, and because when we're in stress mode, it looks overwhelming. We miss things. We're speeding up to thought. We're not productive. And uh, it's, uh, it works much better when you begin to see it and you know that your mind can calm down and you land back in that uh, place of um, well-being, I'll say, of the, where you have your common sense. That'll work for you much, much better. I know I've had things in my life like that. And when I began to calm down, it just flowed. Even though I had this much to do, it just shrunk for me a bit. And when, you know, you're able to stay present doing whatever it is will get done, but it's much more effective. Great. What about chronic pain? I see lots of people, they have backache, pain in the legs for years and years. And some people with the understanding of the principles they have healed it without any doctor, without any medication. So how does this understanding help people with chronic pain? Yeah, you know, I've never experienced, I've been fortunate enough, I've never really had chronic pain. I have low back issues every now and then they act up. But again, you know, um, my guess would be that, um, you know, stress on the body again, you know, lands in wherever it lands. And, and the more that people begin to see that they have an option, that they can uh, live more from that place of contentment, regardless of really what's happening in your life. Uh, I think that, um, you know, their body would be um, more receptive uh, to healing, you know, and um, that, that's what I think uh, it comes down to. But, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm lucky I don't have chronic pain, but again, if someone who lives in high amounts of stress, um, this can happen. I, I know people who have had that, but um, the more that um, we see where that where these uh, feelings really come from, you know, when you see it on a deep level that it's really only coming from thought, you know, people don't have to manipulate their outside circumstances. They don't have to suffer. And um, you know, your, your body heals, you know, I'll, I'll share this, you know, I always lived in high stress for many years. My, when my kids were younger, I was married and we'd go on vacation and it seemed like I just couldn't relax. It seemed like I always got sick every time. I, I even got the chicken pox once on vacation. <laughs> I was 33 years old. My son had the chicken pox. Then I get it on vacation. I'm like, oh, we had to go home. I, it was a mess, right? But I always seemed to get sick on vacation. Yeah, you know, I, I, I could never figure it out. And, and I really had a hard time relaxing. Maybe the last day or two, right? I felt good. And I'm like, you got to be kidding. Vacation's over, you know, because I was paying so, I didn't know this back then, but I was just paying so much attention to my stressful thinking that, of course, I, you know, I, I was just, I got sick all the time. But, um, but on vacation, I just couldn't relax until the last few days. And uh, that's when I began to, I didn't know this, but now I see, you know, you loosen the grip on your thinking. And of course, you're going to relax. So it's, um, you know, it's interesting. This, this understanding helps you see a lot. It really does. And uh, I said, oh, I can't believe I'd, I'm, I'm 60 now. I found this five years ago. How did, I didn't do too bad for 55 years living without the principles. <laughs> but it's. But it's, it just changes everything when you really, really can see that uh, we are the creators of our, our moment to moment experiences. We can either live from our head of fictitious lies or we can live in the truth of what is, you know, and we can live in, in better mental health where physical, mental, emotionally, you know, we, we can flourish in a better way. Beautiful. What do you think about? The people who often get sick, they often get fever, cold. What is the cause of that? 
I'm not a doctor, but again, you know, our weak immune system comes from, you know, stress too. You know, everything isn't it amazing. Really, a lot of things come back to, to stress, and it, um, you know, comes back to thinking that, you know, stress still comes from outside of us, you know, and uh, it's such a big misnomer. I forgot that um, I read something and I think it was um, Dr. Bill Pettit and he had uh, something that we are made to be in stress for like 30 minutes. I think it was like every one to three days, something like that. And it's just incredible. And it's a uh, you know, fight or flight, obviously, we had to run from something, but we're not really made to be in the chemicals of stress, you know, only when needed. And uh, stress is just so uh, overrated, right? Oh, you live on planet Earth, of course, we have stress, you know, and that's what uh, that's what's out there in, in the non 3P world. And um, unfortunately, people get stuck that way, but we're really not made to uh, bathe our organs in, in stress, in stress mode, all these chemicals. So it's uh, so key that, you know, we see that we create it. And the more that we see that on that deep level, we can really live from the right here in the, in the moment, you know, and, and we get stressed when we go, when people go to therapy, they talk about their past for 10, 15, 20 years. It doesn't, it's not even here anymore. It's just kept alive in the present moment by thought, you know, when, when you, um, there's nothing to heal, so to speak, right? When you're in the present moment, you see things for what they really are. You can't change them. So there's just so many things all I hear out there that keep people really um, in this mode of thinking that they have to always heal something, you know? And um, it's just just trying to fix something that they, they can't really fix. Just kind of, you know, spending your time somewhere where it just uh, isn't uh, useful, you know? It all comes back to the cause, just our thinking, right? Yeah, yeah, it's our thinking, you know, and, and we only feel, like I say, we only feel the way we do for everything and anything is just the way that we think about it. But again, I always say it just isn't obvious. You know, it isn't obvious. And, and, and some clients that I work for, worked with, they'd say, oh my gosh, you're crazy. So like you're telling me I've been kind of living uh, kind of like a lie. And yeah, absolutely. You know, even things that I believed about myself for 50 something years that that wasn't true. And then when you see a different way, when you really look to see, you know, how we really operate, uh, it, it changes everything, you know, and you live for more who you really are instead of who you're not. And so when you live in that, trying to control life with the steering wheel and, um, you know, you, you take the grip off, you're able to loosen the grip, you can go in a different direction, right? You surrender to life and the universe will take care of you. You have your wisdom, you'll know, you know, where to go, what to do, what food to eat, right? So that's the wisdom guiding them, right? The wisdom, yeah, we have that inner guide, you know, like, a, what was it the other day? God, what, oh, well, this is a, a while ago, my headlight story, but then I'll share another one. I was uh, driving and I realized it was like early morning and it was dark out. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's so dark out. And then all of a sudden my inner guide said, uh, my wisdom said, put on your headlights. I didn't have any headlights on. So we're always like when our mind quiets down or Lynn, you forgot your keys or you forgot this. Uh, oh, I forgot. Oh, one day I was going to teach a yin yoga class. I got in my car and what was it? Oh yeah, I got in my car and I have the keys to this place but they, were, they weren't with me. And so as soon as I got in the car, I started my car, started to drive away. And, and my thoughts said, you forgot the key to the place. So I had to park and I was chuckling, go back in and get my key. So it's always guiding us. It's always helping us. You know, when the mind is quiet enough, we can hear. It happens to all, for everybody. So uh, we, we have that guide inside, definitely. You know? It's like a GPS, always yeah. guiding us towards the right direction. Beautiful. Yes, we just happen to, you know, you have to be, uh, you know, open enough, you know, and, and I'll share this story. Now, years ago, I had no clue about the principles. I used to do uh, hypnosis and I um, now I see we're all in a trance, right? But anyhow, I did it for about a year or so. And I had to go in on a Saturday and the regular people weren't there. And the, the main office door was locked and I had a client coming in and I didn't have the key. So I'm, oh my gosh, well, worst case, I could do it out in the waiting room. Like I, I just, I couldn't find the key. I'm looking all over the place. 
all of a sudden, and I was kind of a bit frantic, all of a sudden, this thought occurred to me, look under the plant on the shelf. I look under, there's the key. You know, I knew nothing about this. So you don't, you don't even have to know. I mean, obviously you want to know, but my inner guide was helping me out, you know, so it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Hmm, interesting. Does it also help you pay the bills? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you mind my bill story, huh? Let's, we could save that. Yeah, it helps me pay my bills. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I was telling Kron the other day, he's got a good memory. He doesn't forget anything. I used to pay my bills like in a frenzy mode, you know. Um, I hated doing it. I just put it off for as long as I could because I just was beside myself paying my bills. You know, then I, then I began to see that that, you know, crazy, anxious uh, experience, anxiety wasn't coming from my bills or my dwindling bank account. It was coming from me. So now it's not a problem. Something that simple, we, I chuckle, but it's, it's helped me immensely because now I don't even think twice when I pay bills. It just happens. It's not a big deal. So, yeah, it's amazing. See, when you can really see where your experience comes from, that's your inner power. You know, I don't have to uh, be a lunatic to pay bills now. You know, why create unnecessary stress in my body that doesn't belong there? Now I can pay my bills. So, yeah, just that little shift. It's just incredible. Yeah. On an intellectual level, we understand the principles, okay? And when we listen to people like Dr. Dickin Barringer, Dr. Will Parrott, it feels great. But after all that, we all get back to the same routine, you know, thinking and feeling. So, so what is it about the principles that makes the shift? What is it that makes the change? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. You know, I'm, I'm just thinking back, you know, for me, it was, I was noticing more of my inner experience. I noticed when I was calm, I noticed when I felt stressed out. So I was, I always say, and I tell people explore and play. So I began trying to pay more attention to my inner world. And um, I began to loosen the grip for the first time ever that I could loosen the grip on some of this thinking that I was having. Cause I always thought it was the truth. Cause I was thinking it, it had to be true. I had no clue that that wasn't the truth. So I played with it. I, I literally, you know, began uh, to see more and more. And uh, I was doing a, a Toastmasters a couple years ago uh, uh, during COVID. I had joined and it was um, getting my time to speak. And I can feel myself kind of my heart was pounding a bit and I was losing my breath. I was kind of getting a bit anxious. And, um, you know, after a minute or two going through that, I realized, oh, my God, I've let it go. You're doing it to yourself. And I, I see as soon as I kind of just didn't pay attention anymore, uh, it was fine, you know, and, and I, I experienced that because I was playing with it because I knew where it was coming from up here intellectually, but I thought I'm going to play with this. Just, just don't pay attention. Let it go. And soon I was on and I was doing my thing and, and no problem whatsoever. So I'd say, you know, you just kind of pay attention more, you explore more, you know, you have more freedom, you know, and uh, when you really see that uh, all this stuff up here is just background noise, uh, you just don't have to give power to it, you know, so I tell people to always explore and that's what happened to me I paid attention to what I really didn't pay attention to before because I didn't know what I didn't know until I did. I always thought the door opened this way door doesn't open that way it opens this way you know how something works you you can pay more attention you, you, you can do better you know what if somebody has a scary thoughts what if thoughts really scare them yeah and they can right until people really see that the uh the nature of thought you know the more people gain a deep understanding you know there's really no such thing as scary negative thoughts in a way it's just the meaning that we give to it. Cause what might be scary to me might not be scary to somebody else, you know? And, and it's always, you know, I was thinking about this the other day but with the group that I have and um, it always comes back to thought, right? Even though we have consciousness in mind, obviously you can't have one without out the other, 
but it's really seeing thought for what it is because uh, most people don't. I, I had my nails done earlier today, right? And so you become friend, you know, friendly with the lady who does my nails. I've been with her forever. And so she said, Lynn, I got a lot going on up here today. And I said, what, what's going on? Oh, I got a lot of thinking going on, you know? So I was just listening to her and um, people notice, people notice their thinking. You know, they have an idea that uh, thinking is causing them something. They just don't know it yet because she doesn't know that she can let her thinking go. She's entertaining everything that's passing her way. She doesn't know she can loosen the grip on it. So it's just, it's fascinating. You know, I have been with NLP hypnosis, tapping and other psychological stuff, the content, the teachings, and they teach like you have to heal your past. You have to heal your suppressed emotions. And when I see these things, they really work. When people heal uh, from inside the suppressed emotions, the anger, uh, the past events that they still think about, the people that they haven't forgiven, when they go through the process, it works. But after some time, they get back to the same thing. So what does the principles have to do with that? Do the principles tell us to heal something in the mind or is it a natural process? That's a good question because I used to do tapping also with people. You know, I come to see now that tapping is you're tapping on form, you know, of whatever it is. I'm not good enough or I want to forgive my father, whatever it might be. But um, yeah, I'd say, you know, something might something might shift for someone naturally anyway maybe it's not because of those modalities but something could shift obviously but you know the the principles point you to it doesn't matter really what you're thinking that you know we point people the principles point people to beyond their regular schedule pattern of thinking and it's from that place you know you can connect uh to your innate wisdom your innate well-being and, and when you're in that space, you're always healed, right? Because there is no past. There's no future, no future anyway, but there is no past. So past is only in our head. But we're in, when we're in that well-being space, we're feeling good. We're not thinking about ourselves. We're not thinking about our divorce. We're not thinking about, you know, um, the traffic this morning and somebody who cut you off on the highway. We're just in that really good space of that beautiful feelings that we always talk about. And so when you're there, you're always healed, so to speak, you know, and, um, you know, you, you raise a good point. Uh, I read that all the time, even on the, you know, Facebook, all over the place. You got to heal from your past. You know, I, I don't know. I, I just don't see it that way. Everybody's different because, you know, your past is gone. The only way you relive your past is right here in the present moment and you get bumped out by thinking about it. So it's a thought created past and it's how we think about our past that creates those emotions in our body, you know, and, um, you know, even in my own past, I've had crazy things. Who hasn't? Everybody has stuff going on. But, you know, I look at it differently when I'm in the uh, moment of well-being that this had to happen to me. I learned this about myself. I learned this. I learned what kind of guy I don't want in my life. You know, I learned a lot of things about myself. and. Um, so those experiences happened because for me to end up where I am now, you know, and, and somebody might not think about it that way, uh, but I do. And it's, there's nothing that I can change about the past, right? It happened and we can just learn and grow from it, but you can't learn and grow from it when we try to figure it out. You know, our, our you know, wisdom speaks what we, what we need to do. Maybe you met one person at a point of time that brought you, to, you know, this place, maybe they needed to come in for some intervention or whatever it is. Someone came in at the right time in your life that moved you from A to B. You know, you had a particular job for a while that maybe you had a difficult boss. I know, you know, when I was in hypnosis, the, the woman that I work for after the first week, I wanted to quit. She was a maniac. And, and, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I signed a contract. Uh, and, and she was just, you know, all the time uh, trying to control life, trying to control everything. And during that experience, I learned, and I'm grateful, how not to talk to people, how not to run a business. 
And, and that's what I learned. And it was the year, the year wasn't great with her, but I learned from it. There's nothing I need to heal from it because, you know, I, I learned what, what I needed to learn. She had to show me what I needed to, to learn. So that's how I look at things. They happen. People are all doing the best they can, right? Now that we look back, uh, whatever they have going on in their heads, they're, you know, they're just doing the best that they know how. And it's same with this woman doing the best she knew how, but I learned a lot from her. So, yeah, I guess it's on an individual level. People think, you know, healing this and that, but it's, uh, it's our thinking that creates the emotion. So when we have a new level of thinking, we can look at it differently. Forgiveness. We have learned that we have to let go and forgive the people. Okay. But intellectually, it sometimes doesn't work. Like there's a person who hurt you and you say, okay, I forgive them. But deep inside, you feel some emotions that resist it. Okay. So is it important to forgive the other person or yourself? And if it is, how does it happen? Is it an intellectual process? Or does it come from the wisdom? And that's a great question. You know, even in my own experience, you know, uh, I think that um, forgiveness, I always say, is really more for, say, yourself. You know, I've had many things in my life that, you know, I had to forgive people that, so I can move on. And I say move on, but I didn't want to stay in that because we're not thinking about forgiveness. We're not feeling it right. Can't hold a grudge or not really forgive someone until we begin to think about it. So, you know, the way I see it is, you know, I'm, I got I'm divorced, right? I, I, or whatever, whoever has whatever we have going on in our life, right? So forgiveness is more for, say, myself, more for you than the other person, because the other person has no clue whether you forgave them or not. They don't really give a hoot about it, right? They don't know what you're thinking about it. So, you know, it's just making peace in a way. I say making peace, but really seeing that in the present moment versus, you know, here in your head, but uh, hanging on to when we think about, you know, not forgiving someone, that energy is awful. Like I, I didn't want to put that in my body, you know, so I just uh, move on, you know, whatever happened, whatever uh, happened, they were at their own level of, of awareness of, of their thinking. And um, forgiveness is really more about the person. You're not condoning what they did, but uh, you're just acknowledging it. And it's, um, just for yourself, um, you know, who wants to hold a grudge and, and not forgive someone? I mean, they're not, like I say, they have no idea you haven't forgiven them, no clue, especially if they're not in your life, you know, if that helps. But uh, forgiving someone again, not condoning, but bad things happen absolutely to good people and, and, and crazy things happen out in the world. There's no question about that. Um, not saying things don't happen, but uh, yeah, forgiveness is again more for for the person. In my experience, it's been more about the wisdom. Like when I try to forgive somebody or myself, yes. and that actually there is some kind of resistance. But when I let go of those thoughts, after a day or some time, I have new thoughts, thoughts of love, yeah. and thoughts of understanding for myself and for others, and things has changed because those thoughts yes. change yeah for someone who you know that you have that you think you need to forgive and that's fine too they their thoughts change too they you know i mean i have a twin sister right and a couple of weeks ago we had a little argument right so i stormed out whatever it was i was in a thought storm right quieted my mind down and she quieted her mind down by the time i got home she called me and we apologized right she she apologized i apologized we're in a thought storm. I'm not going to hold, uh, you know, not forgive her in a way. It's just that our wisdom spoke, her mind quieted. We got new thought down and, you know, we were good. We we're back on track after a five minute phone call, you know, and uh, you're right. Your wisdom speaks all the time. That's the only way we get fresh new thinking up here. It's rinse and repeat our habits, right? Habit of thinking. Yeah. You bring up a good point. Because most people don't realize our thinking changes on its own. We don't have to, we can't, we're not born to do anything with the burden of our thinking. It just, we weren't born that way, but it, it does change on its own. Absolutely. And the fresh new thinking comes in those aha moments, uh, you know, uh, when we're not lost in our story. Yes, it is the nature of thought that it is always 
changing once you let it go it changes yeah. but if you hold on to it you keep running in the same circle you know we all have been there like sometimes we are angry at our partner okay we feel like oh my god how can they do that and after some time those thoughts they just pass and we have few yeah. thoughts oh my god maybe they had a bad day maybe they were sad about something so we do have this understanding from inside and it always happens we all are born with yes. it yes absolutely and and you're right because we all work the same way whether you have this understanding or not and that's what i like when we point people to the principles they can begin to see even more on how they operate how they work you know and that's where your um you know that's where your power comes from because that's where you can really uh begin to see that you can let thought go you know people go how do i let thought go i used to think that two years ago how do i let it go you know or how do i not have these crazy thinking you know thoughts or maybe something's wrong with me i have all this thinking but when you really see the nature of it that that it is just passing and fleeting and moving through and uh you know the only credibility we give it is the ones that we really pay attention to um and and then that's where um that's where we can always have something fresh and new come in and you know we we also live differently we live you know we live when we live from the ego of who it is we think we are we're insecure you know we have a lot of bad habits and uh you know we don't really live to our potential and then when we you know live less from who we really we live less from who we thought we were and more from who we really are oh my gosh a whole new world opens up because you're you're having new experiences right and then you have a lot of fresh new thinking coming in new insights as well so um i thought we say we live two different lives when we're in our ego we're living a lie but when we're in our you know present moment wisdom we're living in truth of what is versus what isn't you know okay so our last question lynn you are 60 years old and you look a lot younger than your age what's your secret of this amazing health i guess i'm i'm very fortunate and and i'm grateful you know that i have good health but um yeah i just try to you know eat healthy as much as i can i love my glass of red wine every now and then um that's nice and and then uh, walking you know little exercising and um living more from a good feeling you know and i think uh can i be stressed out yes but really i spend it's the opposite for me because i used to spend more time in the stress mode of trying to control life and uh now i spend more time in the surrender mode and um i think that helps yeah so you live in the surrender mode that's your secret as much as possible. can can i go the other way of course but yeah is the the and you know the surrender mode isn't don't do anything you sit and you wait it's just that you know here's the thing what i've come to see you can only control so much a lot of things in life we just can't control and uh you know a lot of times i don't know about anybody here i have things going on in my head that i think something's going to work out this way and i could push for that way to work but when i let it go it unfolds in a whole new way i would have no clue i could never even imagine it you know so you know when we let things go we're in that moment we're always in the energy of the universe that's where potential lives not up here and so uh oh yeah i i can um do videos on some great uh, synchronicity so to speak whatever you want to call them uh, that occur uh, when you let things go uh, magic happens definitely all right guys it's been a wonderful time with you and to uh, learn any words for the audience Thank you for joining everyone. I I appreciate it. I know it's probably later in the evening, 7:00 to 8:00 where you are and or middle afternoon if you're uh, on the east coast or uh, wherever you are, but thanks so much for joining. I hope that uh you heard something that could help you and um you know, I'm I'm glad that you're here because I always say I I was uh, talking to Jerry earlier, but the principles find you. If you were fortunate enough for these principles to find you, uh that is a blessing because something uh in your life or or your whole life will change if not your whole life something in your life will definitely shift and change so uh thank you thanks so much we i enjoyed it all right thank you very much lynn it was wonderful talking with you thank you very Me much too. everybody thank you we love your presence and not miss tomorrow the secret to wealth thank you very much good night and see you tomorrow bye bye